Um, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed lunch as much as I did. Um, our next session will be by one of my favorite speakers. You already got all your sessions. You don't need to kiss me or something like that to get another one. Yeah, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's always nice to see one of his talks, because you can even watch him doing talks in a language you don't even speak, and will still have fun, and maybe understand a bit what he's talking about. So, please welcome Enrico Sini, and his talk about advanced tools for wasting time. Grazie. Uh, la det che a post corre la lingua che non perde la zetta si vede lista allora mi scorre bugnais uh, <laughs> he said that i could speak any language and people would have fun anyway so i could speak bolognese right um, hi everyone uh, i'll go with english um, this talk is about advanced ways of wasting time um, Zach has noted that this is a meta talk because, well, um, a DEPCONF a DEPCONF session is an advanced something, and we are of course all wasting time. So the talk itself is an advanced ways of wasting time. Thanks, Zach, for pointing that out. Um, I'm going to to, to cover um, something that in in Bologna we call cazzeggio which I would define as a way to waste time that is creative, but especially useless. Um, at least useless according to what are the current canons of society, which say that everything that is, that if for something to be useful, it has to be requiring anxiety and pain. So we'll do something useless that is fun. Um, there is a lot of history about cazzeggio. I don't know if there is an English word for it, like creative waste of time. Uh, one could argue that pyramids were a fairly creative way of wasting time. But um, besides this, we don't actually know much about the reasons behind them. Um, we could go in literature and, well, there's been like Greek philosophers who spent time demonstrating that I cannot get from here to there. Uh, Latin poets that wrote like amazing poetry is like, if in the terms you will hear applauding people, then the penis of Mr. Maro has gotten in. It's great uh, stuff. I mean, that, that happened like all, all around um, history. In Bologna, there's been, um, like in, in the beginning of Italian literature, one of the first witnesses of Italian liter literature and culture was big books in which people noted like transactions. And, um, but then like at the end of the day, they had half of a page which was empty and they needed to fill it up. Otherwise, the one could add to the page and falsify the logs. But instead of like painting lines on it, they would just transcribe uh, popular poetry and they are a really nice source of uh, time-wasting literature. But Dante itself, which is like one of the most important classical writers ever, divine comedy and that sort of things, used to write nice poetries together with another friend insulting each other's wives and relatives and blah, and it's fairly interesting. You can get them translated, I have links. Uh, you can ask me about that. Um, well, I, I have various examples in in, in Italian literature, and uh, someone knows Chaucer probably from UK. He's got something nice in that sense. The French will remember Rabelais. Il n'y a mieux torche cul qu'un oison bien plumé pour qu'on lui tienne la tête entre les jambes. That sort of thing. There's no better ass cleaning system than a duck with nice feathers, but you have to keep the head of the duck between the legs. That's like. French literature from the 15th century, and it's great. I suggest you write, read the book. There's like a three-page um, essay about how to wipe uh, the one's bottom after going to the toilet, and the French still haven't figured out. They invented the bidet, but the Italians use it, and they don't. 
so, <laughs> well, uh, but okay, but let's go back to wasting time and not being kicked out by the French, because I still love French people, especially when they have nice cheese in the fridge. Um, so we can go up to more modern times and see like the Dadaist people who take like a urinal and they put it upside down and they call it fountain and that's like a masterpiece of art, which I actually appreciate, or a bicycle wheel and they call it bicycle wheel and, and that's another piece of art. Uh, actually an Italian artist has had a very, it went even beyond that and was a bit probably pissed off by what art was doing, and he decided to take his own shit, put it inside a tin can, and close it, and then label it artist shit, put like a date of uh, packaging and everything, and decide that the price of this artwork is uh, the same price of an equal amount of gold in weight. And, uh, and so he said, well, yeah, this is 100 grams of my shit, and uh, if you want to ha it's, it's a piece of art, because it's artist shit, and uh, if you want to have it, you have to pay the same price of 100 grams of gold. Of course, now, this piece of art is much more worth than that. That's a very advanced way of wasting time and making a point. Um, but, like, um, I don't know, pretty much always there's been, like, people, like, playing with creative waste of time and walking the edge of genius. There's the pataphysics. I don't know if anyone heard of pataphysics, but I guess yes. It's the science that has a method but doesn't have a goal. And there's really nice pages on Wikipedia about it. And um, is there any Discordian around? Next Friday we go out for a hot dog. Um, Right, uh, Umberto Eco of the name of the rose. People know it as like one of the best contemporary Italian writers. Likes to, uh, to to exchange like crap, stupid things via mail with Benigni and Bartezaghi. And yeah, I mean, everyone's pretty much been doing that for uh, quite a while. In UK, there's the nice annals of improbable research, which I appreciate a lot. They do the ignoble prizes. They have a really nice, luxuriantly flowing hair club for scientists that I wanted to join, but I'm not a scientist. So I, now I want to have a PhD just to join this luxuriantly flowing hair club for scientists. So yeah, this, this is noble. This is, uh, well, wa a creative waste of time is a really nice way of exploring uh, new things. Um, it, it's probably not really a waste of time, but you only discover it like, well, late in the future, when people say you were a genius, and you say, no, I was just wasting time. No, sorry, I was a genius, pay me lots of money. <laughs> and so this talk is about like finding advanced ways, ways of wasting time in Debian and um, be genius tomorrow by wasting time today, which uh, is a nice, fun way of becoming geniuses. So one could say that, like, sort of, mm -hmm. right? It could be above. So if you have ideas to to do this more in a more advanced way, like if you have a robot that moves this while that, so. In a way, hacking goes to the bot to the edge of like an advanced way of wasting time, and so sometimes things just follow by themselves. Like when you find yourself with an automatic praying device in your own hand, you turn it on and it prays. Right? You can change the prayer. It's a nice device I got. And when you have an FM transmitter in the other hand. You can just put them together and create the holiness broadcaster. Um, well, those are like stupid examples of things that come naturally. You, you have two unrelated things, you put them together and, and you get something interesting, which is most of what we are going to do um, now. So I'll now start showing what 
some a couple of tools we have in Debian that are useful for wasting time creatively. Well, everyone knows SL, I guess. There's a Debian package for that. It corrects you when you type ls uh, by Mr. Uh, wrongly. <laughs> I quite love um, the person that packaged an, because then I can do things like instead of I can mistype man and do an open office, and I get I, I learned that open office has to do that. Sorry, I have Italian dictionaries, but open office anagrams with chef for piano, which means a full spank in the face. And that just comes like misspelling uh, man, so I think that an should be installed by default in every system. <laughs> Increase the font. More. Okay, let's go on. Uh, we are all grateful, I guess, to Gergely Na Nagy, or I don't know the pronunciation. Gerge Gergely Nagy. Gerge Nagy for packaging Tama, which uh, I, th I don't know if I have installed. No, actually I don't. But I'm working together with Vagrant to um, Tama is a Tamagotchi server. It sits on a port, you turn net to it, and you can play Tamagotchi. And uh, I'm working with Vagrant to revamp my Tama CDD, which is a custom Debian distribution which is installed with zero questions. And it's like the, the easiest system to install ever. And uh, it creates a black box server, uh, deleting everything you have in the hard drive. Um, which runs a Tamagotchi daemon. So you just put the, um, put the CD in your drive, reboot the machine, it does all the installation stuff, and then you, ha and then you can just tell Net to port uh, whatever, I don't remember it, and have your Tamagotchi and feed it. And uh, I think the Tama CDD is very important because then it shows how to create a CDD with, with a simple CDD system made by Vagrant. So ask Vagrant about simple CDD, he's not around, but you'll see him around at that conf, it's really cool. And that's like, so in a way, wasting time is a kind of exploring, as a way to explore new technology. Uh, when you don't know what to do with a new cool tool, you just waste time on it. Other nice things that we have, well, everyone knows, I guess, Vigor. which is VI with the paperclip. Oh, okay. Uh, I have problem with the window manager. Okay. And, well, there's the whole BSD games package, which has lots of really nice things. <laughs> it's the evil uh, tool to count your mail. And um, all sorts of filters, like... Uh, Pig Latin, I don't know if it does decoding. Uh, <laughs> I really suggest you explore the package BSD games. It's really nice, it's got nice things. People know robot finds kittens? And you are a robot, you go around and you have to find a kitten, and sometimes you don't find a kitten, it's a screwdriver, so you keep <laughs> looking for the kitten. <laughs> oh. 
oh well, I'm fairly unlucky today and uh Gah! Oh, found, finds the kitten and it's very cute, they find each other. <laughs> and then of course fortune that everyone knows. Um, okay, that's like simple tools of wasting time. Um, but, and we can see like, to do, we can try to do something like a bit more uh, advanced with the various tools we have. For examples, um, no, I like to to, to respect my public. <laughs> um, it's really nice to have a look at everything that is in the package filters. Um, so we can do like uh, translate. Well, I, I guess that that's very well known. I can take like uh, an email. Uh, Um, so, okay, so I can, ah, oh, find. Right, so we get the the text body out of um, out of Debian Devel, and uh, and we can do stuff with it, like um, make it really flamish. <laughs> Actually, it's quite interesting to see the mail headers uh, mangled like that. I like delivered. <laughs> Or we can make it like, I don't know, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. okay, it's quite nice. So that's like the, these really nice English filters, I wish, wish people did that for Italian as well. I think uh, it must not be simple to write that. I don't know. That could be a buff for DebConf with the Italian cabal people around here to create something for Italian. Another thing you could do with text. It's nice to have sources of text because then you can do nice stuff with it. Um, let's see. Less. Uh, nah. I think I deleted it. I had the. Uh, I don't. I downloaded the. Is it too. Too big now? No. This is still readable. I downloaded the list of. Uh, someone made a really nice list of uh, um, Debian package release names. Like the. I'm drunk tonight and it's Saturday and there's no nice film on TV release. So that is, a, is another nice data source, or a mailing list archive is a data source. And data sources is nice because in Unix we have lots of filters. So for example, we can use Dada Dudu. It's another wonderful Debian package I love. That it studies the frequency distributions of the input, builds a Markovian chain representing the statistical distribution of the input, and generates an infinite text on output which resembles the input. Now I should cut away the headers, well, which I could do easily. Grab minus V, blah. <laughs> Don't need to be accurate, right? <laughs> 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 It's much quicker now. 
And so you get like, yeah. I like that as well. Uh, I like the description. Tadudu is a program that analyzes text for Markov chains of word probabilities and then generates random sentences based on that. Sometimes these sentences are nonsense, but sometimes they cut right through the heart of the matter and reveal hidden meanings. Yes. Well, <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I didn't. Did you filter it? Oh, uh, filtered, right? I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's broken, <laughs> but uh, that's what I, that's the common line. Um, okay, we we can go on. Um, what do I have? Then that there's polygon, which. I quite like. Um, it's a generator of RAM. It's a gener Hi. It's a generator of random sentences from grammar definitions. And uh, I like the description, which I copied from Upstream, who is probably a genius. It's an interpreter of a language designed to define languages. So it's an advanced tool indeed. And um, it's uh, used as a parody tool for linguistical habits, stereotypes, and trends in this foolish era. And then it goes on describing old stuff about parody, and it's really nice. And with Polygen, you can define a grammar definition and, uh, and run it. Last year, there was a Polygen both, and uh, dev, dev, Polygen, let's see if I have. A few grammar, no. How do you use the computer at this font size? <laughs> okay. Okay, use a less. So last year at the Polygen buff, we created a couple of <laughs> grammars. Uh, I don't know, there's the... There was... <laughs> and so on. Uh, there was like a changelog, generates changelog entries. That <laughs> <laughs> was done during last year's. Well, yeah, it's nice, like. <laughs> yeah, that last year there was the UDEV breakage happening during the conf. So, well. Um, Okay, let's go back. So with Polygen, we can generate all sorts of stuff. There's the bio, the, the biography of the author of Polygen, which we can, of course, format better. Uh, like, uh, right, okay, and so on. Which I can stand filter with uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then, yeah, we can do all sort of things like um, uh, actually this. Uh,
Okay, let's see. We can have uh, this is useful. We can make a bot for uh, for the dash for the Debian IRC channel. It's automatically a Q and A, uh, so that like the arrogant people can have a more arrogant person than them and uh, stop being arrogant. And then, of course, we can always have it said by a cow. <laughs> Cowsay is one of my favorite Debian packages. For example, I can, like, uh, I don't know, edit files and, like, I'm an email or something, and have it, like, yeah, come on, wake up. I can do nice Vim macros with that. Uh, there was a project with Alfie. Well, Kausei has got like lots of different themes. It's themable. So kind of cute. Uh, it's themable and there was a project with Alfie last year to create a RMS uh, polygen grammar and have a, a GNU Kause file to read it. Uh, he needed to provide me the GNU Kause file which I guess you still have it in some part of your hard drive and but we'll get there sooner or later. Um, this is nice, uh, for example, um, so what if you want to know all the cows that you have, you can easily do mm, copy and paste, because I'm lazy of typing. <laughs> That's a nice uh, one line, common line thing that creates a demo of all the Kause things and so on. Uh, other nice things you could do, um, I created um, is it here? No. I was ve fairly proud of this other one. It's uh, the auto polygon grammar, which generates a common line, which you can then um, <laughs> that, that was, and you can make a polygon screensaver. We just does it over and over uh, with character encoding problems and so on and it goes on and we have a screensaver right um, in few lines of shell but we'll get to screensavers later uh, okay the insult generator uh, make it mean and 
And that's all like composing tools we have. It's, it's quite nice. And, and we have lots of tools to compose, which I love. Um, for the Italian crowd, I created the uh, infinite optimism generator, which does polygen. Uh, well, let's go here. Repeat 50 times. Uh, um, some optimistic phrase generator thing, and then give it to Dada Dudu, uh, and then give it to <laughs> to festival. And it goes on. And it goes on generating, and it goes on generating optimistical phrases forever, and that's the automatic uh, optimism generator, which can, of course, which can be, of course, turned into an automatic optimism broadcaster. <laughs> which is illegal in most countries, and that explains why there are so many wars in the world. Um, right, I have a, um, okay, so we can move uh, away from Polygen a moment. Uh, we can have, no, actually I had another thing we could do with Polygen along these lines. We have uh, Polygen Metal, generates names of metal songs. Um, it's very useful when you hack with Mournful. It's got this Amarok stuff sending in IRC channel, the music he listened to, and I... And I <laughs> I'm always humiliated because he listens to really interesting stuff. And now I, I created the Polygen bot that I can just <laughs> ask myself to generate a metal thing so I, I don't feel left aside. There's between him and Isaac and other people. So I, I can generate like uh, metal songs and I can do the same trick. I give it to Dada Dudu and then uh, festival. Uh, no, not it. Although it would be interesting. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm waiting. Sounds a bit like this. I wanted to put like a, I, I was looking for a, a goth metal blah loop to put below the, the, the festival voice. And that would make like for the infinite hard rock uh, thing. And I was also looking how to... What? That's the maximum volume of... Shadow of Elf Dam Victory Shadow of Corpses of the Galactical Diabolic of the Fatality of Mortals Creation Warrior the Knights of Frost in the Violence in I didn't manage to have two audio output mixed together. I don't know why the ESD, DSP would crash and also AOS would crash and so on because I wanted to do this on top of a um, on top of a hard rock loop, and the voice goes lower and lower, and it's perfect. You can control the festival pitch, so you can make it really low. Okay. So that's uh, the infinite uh, uh, golf metal song generator. And um, I, uh, one thing that I did um, was really nice and well, had lots of success in Italy when I presented this talk. It's probably not as understandable here, but I will tell you anyway, because it's a bit of an insight on the Italian left-wing culture. There's, um, I think it's an issue in the left-wing which exists since at least when I was born, and I think even well before. And people have been asking themselves if, if like, pussy is left-wing or right-wing. And that was like a very important question in Italian left-wing politics because like left-wing activists would wonder if it's left-wing to spend time having sex or if it's right-wing because you don't fight for the revolution. And this problem was unsolved until Debian came. 
and uh, and so what I did, I I made a little exp experiment with. Um, uh, with this really nice package. It's a text classifier by Yeezian. It's a very advanced tool, which, uh, which when I see a very advanced tool, I think of how I can waste time with it. Where's Clint? Clint Adams is not around because he was the maintainer. I don't know if he still is. I think he orphaned it after he knew what I did. Um, I used, um, I, I've been downloading home pages of various Italian newspapers. And then I've been dividing them in left wing and right wing. And then I've been using them to train the Bayesian classifier. And then I've been testing the classifier. I downloaded the cocaine dot whatever uh, website. And it's been classified like right wing. And I downloaded the marijuana dot blah website. And it's been classified like left wing. So. In Italy, we all know that cocaine is right wing and marijuana is left wing. I don't know if it's the same abroad, but uh, the, the presidents of Fiat are very well known for sniffing, for sniffing cocaine. And the, student, the, the rebel students are very well known for sniffing marijuana. So that was a good way of testing the classifier. And then, of course, I downloaded some like website about well, pussy, which took a while to find. And the classifier classified it as left-wing, which proved that Italian left-wing activists can finally have sex in peace with their conscience. <laughs> There's other um, interesting, uh, small, nice things we could do while we're still in the common line before passing to the graphical interface. Um, another couple of tools are like run type. I can do like uh, blah. Uh, I don't know what do I run type. Well, you know where it is. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I don't have that. Um, it's nice. It's a slow version of cat. You can configure it. It's got lots of things. And it's a nice component. You could like put in pipelines and stuff. And there's a lovely tool that I use a lot. Bogo sort, <laughs> and uh, it will sort a file by randomly permutating it and see if it's sorted, and if it's not, try again. <laughs> it's great because you can stop it at the first interaction, and it's good for selecting um, random things, so I can do like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I don't have any more that list of um, quotes. Um, uh, do we have internet around here? Oh, we do. Yes, I'm the maintainer of Polygen. Yes, I, I'm never supposed to do this sort of trick. But I'm a wireless, as, and, uh, as any user of Polygen knows, uh, of, uh, sorry, of um, not Polygen, uh, GuestNet. As any user of GuestNet knows, I can't make GuestNet work with wireless. Hi, Martin. And, uh, well, yeah, it's supposed to work. Last beacon two seconds ago. Well, kind of slow. Okay, <laughs> fine. Good to me. Yeah. 
Well, we'll get there. Um, so for example, if you want to like, uh, you can do this. Uh, I don't remember. Okay, dash n. It's nice that it's a sort algorithm that has a don't sort <laughs> <laughs> function, and it's the most useful. So, if you are like the bastard operator from hell, you can like run this. Actually, it always gets me the system stuff because there's only one account on this system, but this could be a way to automatically select one user to delete every night. <laughs> yeah, but there's only me, so it's not random anymore. Let's see if the HCP is kind of slow but gets there. No. The HCP doesn't like me. Too bad. Uh, I can still show it some examples because I blogged about it and I still have them around. So you could like take the package release names and then put them in data doodoo. It generates new package release names if you don't know uh, how to choose them. You can, um, okay, this makes it a bit more cleaned up. You can do use like a bogo sort to have like a fortune kind of thing using the Debian release names. And then of course you can generate a, a fortune database out of them. So that was like uh, some examples about that would have liked. It's quite nice to see the results, but um, I'll wait for the HCP. And, uh, Another idea I had, uh, now I bought a, a Bluetooth key and I heard that Bluetooth is kind of hackable. And I thought that one could you make like an automatic tool that scans um, Bluetooth devices, mobile phones, and tries to hack into them and download the, um, the phone directory of it and then see if there are people that have like similar numbers in the phone directory. And in that cases, it could like send an SMS to each other like we may be friends. That could be like such a lovely project and you would end up knowing like everything about Bluetooth. So that would be a very advanced way of wasting time and then you just go and find a job in the Bluetooth market. See the point of wasting time. I mean, okay, then I think we can be done with the command line tools and move into the X interface. Um, so everyone should have installed one of the most important packages in Debian, which is Cappuccino. It's a very important tool. It's uh, made by an Italian, of course. Oh, okay. Let's try without my... Bastard. Okay. And it's just a tool that makes your computer look busy when you go out and take a cappuccino. It's called cappuccino and not lunch. It will finish after 10 to 15 minutes <laughs> on purpose. I actually have been talking with Upstream and about like integrating polygen with it, but Upstream is really inactive. For some reason, I don't know. Uh, and lots of um, another like interesting tool for wasting time in Debian is um, well literally for wasting time is clocks. We have such a huge amount of clock gadgets in the distribution. Uh, I remember Sun at some point did some sort of uh, GNOME usability testing in GNOME. And one of the problem was that one of the tasks they had is like add a clock to your panel thing. And the problem people would get confused because they had like six different types of clock applets. And they didn't know like what the hell they should put there. Um, we have many. 
and um, I don't know wh why that they're so important, but 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 I I like that they are there. Hi. Um, for example, um, I quite like ex dali clock. I don't know what's wrong with this GNOME term. You know, it's very arrogant. It's like a um, more fluid clock. Uh, we have um, sun clock, which looks harmless, except when you go into the options. <laughs> <laughs> And I have no idea. It's got like these very user-friendly buttons, like ampersand. <laughs> <laughs> How about that? <laughs> it's the menu, right? <laughs> I love it. I have no. I don't dare pressing those things. I think one is to wipe my home directory. <laughs> and we have this that I love. It's the clock for the fellow Aust Australians. Um, if clock have been invented in Argentina, sorry, it's an Argentinian clock, they would run counterclockwise because down there a sundial runs the other way around. And so this program uh, brings the, that option to Argentinians, which now can have justice. And I proposed, like, I had friends, like, it's got a bunch of, You can have them mirrored. And our friends were throwing an NTP enabled um, New Year's Eve party, uh, which I liked the idea. That was the Taipei Linux user group, so lovely. And uh, NTP enabled like New Year's Eve party is great. And uh, I told them that it would have been a nice idea to have like the two clocks that would converge at midnight. But uh, I don't know if they actually did it. Why it became smaller? Well, so yeah, you can waste time with clocks a lot. Um, everyone knows Xserve, uh, which well I don't have installed. Uh, what? Non-free. Okay, no one knows it. I don't have it installed. I don't know it either. Uh, yeah, I was about to say that Xplanet is like a good. Um, well, oh, right, it doesn't work. I have to put it in a window. No maintainers, this Nautilus stuff is very arrogant. I can't run my ex penguins on it, and it really like steals this background stuff. And please fix it. Um, X Planet is like shows the the, the Earth uh, rendered in real time with the the, the sun and everything. And uh, it, what is inter It's a nice advanced tool. Uh, I did interesting stuff with it, like. I used it to map uh, weather stations on, on the map to see if my software was actually computing them correctly and so on. But if you go to the Xplanet website and see how people hack the map, and th they display stuff in their background, in their X window background, like the current earthquake in Jupiter uh, with that, and that's like such a nice advanced tool of wasting time. Uh, I, apparently, Andrea still has got an interesting setup. Yeah, but then I don't have it configured interestingly. Uh, I need to get. Yeah, and then I need to. Uh, anyway, have a look at the Xplanet website. It's interesting. Um, and then let's go into more specialized tools for wasting time we have in X. I quite like XTD. Okay, moving around <laughs> the cursor. <laughs> the cursor becomes a, a heart. You can move it around, keep it there, do your work. It's 
Yeah? I think so. Um, This could be a list of packages we can have to waste time, and I'm sure Xroach is blah. I don't know. Um, but I suggest you run through the list of, through the output of this command. It's really interesting, and you can get stuff like kodo, which is probably starting the whole KDE behind it. Yeah, well, it's just well. You know how how long you go with your mouse, and I think it goes very well with xlabby. which is a simply bastard tool that just hooks your mouse, and you have to fetch the blue dot <laughs> if you want to have it back. <laughs> One day, but now with I can have like the 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 kilometer the, the um, odometer that tells me actually how many how, how much do I move my mouse to get there. I, I love the combination of the two. Um, Xlabby is like don't ever ever mess with your X authorization files so that people can like run X stuff. Into your thing, like you have like x labby dash b dash p, and yeah, you just can't see the labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> and you can have other stuff like the maze is built by a self avoiding random walk that start from blah. Um, and you have you can grab the keyboard, so you can't use window manager hotkeys to get out of it, and you can use it together with, with no quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think so, but oh, there's a quantum mode, <laughs> which I think <laughs> goes near to. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's lovely. <laughs> so cute. Okay, great. I mean, yeah. Uh, have a look at the man page. It's great. I quite like also Ask Desktop Waves, waves that makes your system more fluid. <laughs> they did a version for XGL. You have to see it. I've seen a demo of XGL with this. It's like, Ford. yeah. Okay. Well, I could like later on, if we really don't know what to do, I can show you an XGL demo, which has really advanced ways of wasting time inside. Um, right. But the nice thing is when you can compose stuff together, so, for example, um, you can compose X stuff with command line stuff and get into like the real power, what should be the Unix way to um, X to, to graphic interfaces. Uh, I can do like, uh, okay, that's one screensaver, right? Stuff, go, this nose guy goes around and eventually says something. Hi. Tell me something, please. Right. <laughs> okay. Luckily, you can, I mean, the X screen saver guys are really nice and they allow you to plug stuff. Oh. 
Hitler. Yeah, it has problems with screen refresh. Come on, wake up. Oh, mm. improvable. Like, is there a way to tell GNOME Terminal to, to stay in the back when I run software? And then it goes around and uses Polygen. I should like submit a um, request for a feature um, to them. Well, and so on, you can have. Uh, it works very well with the optimism generator. Um, and uh, there are ways to make it talk. So now we create a speech demon. That's a speech demon. And then we do Should be it. Except it doesn't speak. What? Yeah, but it used to work when, when no, blah. Whatever, I'm sorry. Or maybe I should have tested it. <laughs> but, well, whatever. Um. Well, that was the idea. It was a nice common line to learn about FIFOs. I think it's the kind of example should be made when you teach about Unix. Uh, to in, in universities. There's, so there's many like uh, screen savers. Another one I like a lot and uh, and that's like a nice um, so there's phosphor, okay, it just prints stuff like this but it's nice when you actually do Yeah, well, you can do all sort of stuff. Now, now it's not right. It's a full terminal emulator. <laughs> so <laughs> you can use it instead of Xterm. I don't know if it does UTF-8. I just did Control C and. <laughs> no problem. That's aptitude. We should submit. We should, should file. A, we should file a bug to aptitude that it doesn't run correctly under phosphor. <laughs> I think it's a very critical bug. Okay. So we can file a bug with patch. Um, okay. Other things is we can do the. Uh, Oh, uh, well, we know this. I don't have really funny polygon grammars for English to play with Dada Dudu, so we can do like uh, this.
And we can have the infinite Debian policy, pol the, the infinite Debian policy screensaver. Hey, um, this could be like uh, something to show up at conferences um, with drunk when people are drunk. Probably there's a nice uh, picture viewer. Um, matrix view. Um, it it sh it does like the matrix stuff, but it shows images. Uh, sometimes, and you can decide what images to show and all sort of things. Oh, thanks a lot. It's quite subliminal, it's fairly interesting. You can plug stuff into that as well. Basically, any screensaver, if you just read the man page, they are documented. Uh, if you just read the man page, is um, uh, you can plug all sort of things into them and you can get really cute stuff. Uh, Scottish people, of course, are can have a tartan generator. It's actually like um, quite serious because it gener it can generate tartans from like most Scottish families. So. So that's, well, it has its Damien package, and I like it. There's a gdesklet, which, bah, whatever, um, oh, yeah, sure, why not? Uh, which has lots of useless stuff inside, um, but Other nice thing you could do with Unicode in the character map, there's lots of nice symbols you can just paste on ICQ and remember the names like, um, you, you know that control shift g uh, can allow you to um, input Unicode stuff. And so you can make hearts on, uh, to, to use on ICQ, it's another thing in the charm in the gnome charm on in the character map there's like plenty and it's really nice uh, so you can remember the names of the most important um, as advanced tools of wasting time like we have Guppy, uh, which is an um, editor which many people can use at the same time over the network is a text editor with multiple cursors and I was thinking that could be used like to decide which pub to go in the night uh, a number of geeks uh, sit around the table with laptops and they do a wireless ad hoc network, run Guppy, uh, connect to each other and then edit a file in which people type uh, the name of places they could go and people can add comments to the name of places typed by other people and then at the end one could, uh, you end up with a nice documentation about where to go and where not to go and you can just publish on a wiki. That's another advanced way of wasting time. Um, what? Well, it, it's, it's some crowds of friends take like three hours to decide which path to go, so this could actually speed up things. Um, and then another idea I had is um, uh, there's multi-sync, which can sync your uh, phone book in your mobile phone with your um, e evolution data store or KDE address book and so on. And you can also sync with LDAP. 
And since many things use LDAP, like the Unix account stuff, I had the idea of adding, uh, creating a user automatically every time I add a number in my phone book. That would like make it very easy to do user administration. Like you have teenagers that are really good at administering their like phone directory. So you can replace your system administrator with a teenager and a mobile phone. <laughs> so yeah, uh, another idea I had, which I quite like, is the Bayesian horoscope. Uh, like it, it works like this, like in the morning, you, so you decide a list of information sources, like newspapers, weather forecast website, Debian mailing lists, and so on. And in the morning, you take, um, you, you build like a Bayesian database out of their content. And then in the evening, uh, you tell uh, a Bayesian classifier if the day was good or bad. And you go on for a while, and then the Bayesian classifier will learn, according to the world events, if it usually becomes a good or a bad day for you. And so eventually you stop training, and in the morning you just ask the Bayesian classifier to classify the information in your data sources, and it will tell you if you will have a good or a bad day. Right. Um, Emacs users probably know they have a doctor. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have Emacs installed, I think. Right. But if people have Emacs, they do like um, this. And if they have troubles using the system, the, they can get help, psychological help. And. Yeah, um, that's like more or less the list of things I, I could show, and I welcome more ideas. I think we can, yeah? Right, that's a nice idea. Take e e Emacs Doctor and Eliza run through the filters talking to each other. That, like, uh, it, it's non trivial to do, I guess, because you have to hook into lots of stuff. And so it's a really nice exercise to actually learning Lisp uh, and the shell stuff. And I, I'm not sure I understand. In, in what? Ah, in, in Emacs. Psychoanalyze pinhead. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, lovely. I, I will install Emacs. Um, another thing, well, uh, in, in the Italian version, uh, I forgot to mention that one another of the reasons to give this talk is because in, in uh, Debian, we don't, uh, when you run Windows and you have to waste time, you just run defrag. And then you feel like you feel like your computer is doing something important, and you feel like you are smart because you look at those blobbing things doing busy stuff in front of you, and and so the, the, like uh, Debian is uh, ingenious is is a great operating system because we don't have defrag, and we actually waste time with something much more creative. So um, unfortunately. Um, I discovered that there is a big risk because, uh, and I think it's uh, uh, XGI is trying to boycott Debian development because they 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 built they built this stuff, which is a defrag. That that like shouldn't happen. So. Now you know it exists. Now it's defragging my XFS drive. I suggest we remove XFS from Debian and we go back to, to more serious stuff. But luckily, it doesn't have the twinkling, blibbling blogs, so it doesn't look so bad. And it's nice you can control C a defrag stuff, and it doesn't mind. 
Right, so that's um, more or less it. I don't know how much time did I waste. Well, we have the room to till 1 a.m. in the night. So I welcome above. <laughs> that will be our next advanced tool of wasting time. I guess people have seen it. And you wonder why drivers are not made fast enough, because <laughs> I've seen it in real life. It goes even worse than this. This is an earlier version. Uh, I'll go on, because it can be a bit more lethargic. Blah. <laughs> well, that, that will be like wasting time <laughs> in the next generation of X. Um, okay, well, and oh yeah, film and transparency on top of each other on the edge of a cube. I don't know what they were thinking, but um, well, okay. Anyway, uh, that that's the future of wasting time, and but it's probably not as creative. I I think that's it. If people have ideas, we can like put them together, make a nice blog entry, and. Uh, Anyway, thanks for your um, participation. Um, I always like to give this talk. And see you next time.